suit up, strap in, warm the tires, and leave on yellow. Time for the Mitsu Times Podcast. Presented by MitsuTimes.org, the home of the fastest Mitsubishi cars. With your host, Josh. Hey, what's going on, guys? It's Josh with Mitsu Times. Today, my guest is a special guest, Mr. Harley Town of Barnbilt Dreams. How are you today, sir? Fan freaking tastic. How are you, brother? I am great now that we are uh, doing this thing. I, I'm, um, you know, been wanting to do this ever since we first hooked up, and I feel like it's it's been a long time coming because I love what you're doing, and obviously, uh, in the last few weeks, you know, you've come over and supported Mitsu Times and have been, uh, you know, putting out a thousand times percent more than I've been doing. So I, you are a much appreciated member of the Mitsu Times team now, and, and uh, I'm very grateful to have you. Well, shoot, bro. I super appreciate it. I'm glad I'm glad that we could team up. It's been quite the journey already, so I can't wait to see what keeps happening. Yes, sir. It's um, It has, uh, you know, we talk a lot uh, privately about motivation, and it's it's been great uh, for my motivation to watch the videos that you've been doing with, with some of our great community members. And uh, I really feel like not enough people are watching them. Yes, I agree. I know we talk about that sometimes too, but the people who are watching them, I know it's, it's motivating them to get their car fixed and, you know, to make it to these events and to want to be on the pot on, you know, the Mitsu times racer spotlight and hopefully, submit a slip because that's that's what we want people to do right to go out and race their cars and and show off how great not only how great our community is but how great these platforms are bro i i agree like a hundred percent with getting the people out there that's a huge goal of mine that's kind of why i tried to uh you know do it in person maybe i know you always can't but like you know to show the show for one people have hardships because like on the phone you know nobody maybe knows what other people are going through or they're experiencing the same things yeah so like when I'm in person, I try to show like, Hey, you know, he's, he's pushing through too, or, you know, that type of thing. Yep. So yeah, I mean, Hey, maybe people aren't watching them now. We'll keep grinding. We'll keep getting it out there. I mean, the response seems good so far. The only bad thing I've heard really <laughs> has been the microphone thing. And honestly, I agreed. So I remedied that. that. Yep. Yeah. 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 So it's like, cool, man. I mean, again, my whole goal is not to put out crappy content. Right. I but- want to, Go ahead. Go ahead. No, you first. But, you know, it's not just the, the racer spotlights that you've been doing, but you've also been doing videos, not about the car, but about the driver. So, we, you know, a lot of us, uh, you know, myself included, looked up to people like Devin, you know, for a, a real long time, ever since I've been into these cars. And, uh, you know, it almost, it, it, I, I compared a lot to a celebrity, right? Like, you, oh, yeah. you know, you wouldn't think that Brad Pitt would come on your podcast or, or do a <laughs> video on your YouTube channel to talk about how he came from humble beginnings himself and how he just puts his pants on just like we do every day. And I love to hear the story behind the guy, behind the wheel. You know what I'm saying? Like, what, oh, what's yeah. he all about? So I, I do want to – I'll give – I always try to give praise, you know, where it's due. And even though it wasn't intentional, I, I went to a shop local, Force Engineering, and Tyler – showed me a car and he's like hey man you might like that it was a seven second mustang and he kind of walked by it and i was like holy crap man like you know he didn't even really seem too phased by it and long and short of it is i asked him you know what makes what excites him about the cars now and he was like it's the people and for some reason man that really resonated with me and the longer it lingered in my brain the more it clicked and i'm like dude that's what people need to see like because you can have a fast car and be a piece of crap person, or you can be from money or, you know, who knows. Right. Mm -hmm. So like getting to know the driver for me is, is a huge thing. So like, of course I like knowing the specs. I like, I mean, I'm a car guy, like fire me up, bro. Tell me what turbo you got. Tell me what's going on. But also like, who are you? Are you a piece of crap? Are you cool? Like you said, do you put your pants on the same way? And it was cool being at Devin's like he was super bro, super humble. I mean, super, super, I don't want to say this like in a bad way, but like, you're know, normal. And right. like you said, bro, like you, you may not know that, you know, he, he never made me feel uncomfortable. He never made me feel out of place. He never, and same as you, bro. I'm a big fanboy of a lot of these guys. That's a big part of why I got back into DSM. So yeah, going to their shops and like it, 
may sound cliche, but like, it's a dream for me to be doing what I'm doing. So again, man, I super appreciate the opportunity to team up with you and make these things happen. Absolutely. Heck yeah. And, and you know, it's kind of like one of those things where we could read about these guys, uh, you know, not just Devin Warren also, and, and the people oh, that, yeah. we, that we have planned for the future, we could read about their car in the magazine and be like, you know, let's take Albert from machine concepts racing and his amazing six second talent that he so graciously brought to the shootout last year, uh, right. ju- just for funsies. You know, we could read about that guy's car in the D sport magazine and, and see, you know, why he did this and why he did that and this and that and the other, what the specs are on the engine, what the specs are on the transmission, the turbo, the wheels, but we don't get to see the guy himself and what he's all about. If it wasn't for his Facebook, hell, I wouldn't even know who drove the damn car. <laughs> I've, I've just recently actually seen his Facebook. So it's funny you said that. Yeah. Like, I mean, I, the car obviously speaks for itself, right? Right. So like, yeah, he's another one. Like, I'd love to talk to him, you know, like anybody like that, bro. Like I love, like you said, yeah, you can read about it, but let's talk about it. Let's yeah. see who you are. I think uh, it may shock a lot of people. Probably not a lot if you know me, but I work on all cars. I can fix pretty much anything, but I just never really learned the specifics of why this turbo does that, you know, or cam duration or, I mean, I know the basics of all of it, right? But Mm -hmm. I'm just not a guru. So like maybe that's another reason that it resonated so much with me to get to know the people. Because when it comes to like why this combination works, if you have this intake manifold and like I get the basics but for the most part bro it's above my pay grade yeah no no no. i, I get that 100 percent because i feel like before i do one of the uh mitsu talk tech videos i tell the whoever i'm doing the video with hey if i do something and it sounds stupid it's because i don't know what i'm talking about i need you to stop <laughs> me right away literally bro that's me to a t i will make myself look silly super fast <laughs> <laughs> no issues there but I want to talk about, uh, you know, your, I wouldn't say just barn built dreams motto, but your life motto, if you will. I want to talk about feeding dreams and starving fears, what that means. Um, mm. Because, you know, obviously you can just type something on the internet, but, but this is something that, you know, I believe in. Yeah, that you believe in that I think that people need to, to grasp in their soul, you know what I'm saying? Not just with their eyes. So I know everybody probably, uh, you know, likes to make their story seem worse than it is or something to hype up when they get a victory. Um, I'm not, I don't ever like to under hype or over hype anything. I've had a life. We all have, but something clicked to me. Like I want to say five, six years ago, I weighed like 300 pounds. I had been out of the army for a while. I was driving truck and it just, kind of clicked to me how much time I was wasting right and it's like I I wasn't ready to make the change yet but I slowly worked into it as I slowly worked into it I was like what it just clicked like if I can do this why can't I do the next thing and they always say if you see somebody else do it that means it's possible Mm -hmm. so for me I just literally was like bro I can do this and then I I'm not even gonna lie I heard something about a guy saying to a girl in a movie or something like, I'm going to feed your dreams or something like that. And I was like, Oh my gosh, dude, that like, and I take it serious. Like uh, I try not to get too corny or whatever, but that's my life, bro. Like, like we even just talked about like motivation lasts about two seconds. Mm -hmm. Discipline will is what gets the dream done, at least in my case. And I don't like speaking for other people, but, and again, I don't like hyping myself up, but who knew me? maybe even in the Mitsu community three years ago. Right. Nobody, probably. And if you know me now, it's not because I'm special. It's not because, <laughs> trust me, it's not because I have money. It's because I literally starve my fears. Mm-hmm. I don't give them a chance. Like, I don't let my emotions dictate my day because I'm a very, I have so many highs and I have so many lows. I feel like I messed up my chemicals and my body my whole life. I've just learned how to not care about them. So feeding my dreams and starving my fears, I was like, everybody called it a midlife crisis. I take that as a compliment. <laughs> so I, I've started with spectator drags. I lost a long time ago, and I'm like, I have to get that one back. And then I won four in a row, ended up crashing my car, and I'm like, I'm good. Let's see what I can do in drag racing. So like now, of course, you know, 
I'm trying to see what I can do on all platforms. Yeah. I'm trying to see just as long as it's in my cars, out, car shows. I don't really like car shows. <laughs> if I'm being honest, I feel like they're too subjective. But again, you never know what's possible, right? Right. But you I, show I, up, I you have like, a shot. I feel like what you do so well, Harley, is, you know, we could talk about, um, you know, what your dreams are or whatever, Ooh. but you Ooh. make you make people come face to face with what their actual dreams are. You make them either put it down on paper or put it down in text or yeah, whatever yeah. to make people actually think like, shit, what are my dreams? Bro, like, so ultimate goal here. Ultimate goal for me personally, right? Say I die, whatever. A month, a week, whatever. My ultimate goal that I know I fulfilled my dreams is if I inspire somebody else to chase theirs. Yeah. So like, and again, it's not corny to me, bro. Like that is my life. So when it came time to like make stickers, I found a company that could put feed dream star fears and you could write, I wrote my dream that way. Whoever buys the sticker can buy it. And then you take that backing. It's not a sticker as well, but that's where you start the manifestation process. It's where you start your belief in yourself. It's where you say it out loud for the first time. It's like, I want to do this. That is Probably the coolest thing that's happened to me in the last couple of years, if I'm being honest, car related wise, Mm -hmm. is when people personal message me, them working on their project. And I don't even know, bro, it makes me even emotional right now. It may sound corny, but like, that means a lot to me, dude. Like you chose me of everybody and they'll say something like, bro, I didn't want to do it today, but I got out there and did it. Like, cause that's what it's about, right? You don't want to do things 90% of the time. And now, so like, yeah, man. I do. I take that stuff real serious. I try not to get too corny or cliche, but that is the life I, I live. Well, I mean, you personally know, I uh, haven't talked to you, how easy it is to lose your motivation towards. No, let, let's. I mean, we could talk about car stuff, but it's easy to lose your motivation towards whatever you're working towards. And, yeah. and to have someone who's constantly reminding you, like, hey, don't forget about this thing that you set this goal for. Or, oh, yeah. you know, oh. I did this so you could do this or, you know, here's here's what what I think is important to a lot of people, not just when it comes to this, but also anything mental health related. And I know this is a car podcast. I promise I'll get back to it. But, hey. you know, what, you got to have a support system, even if it's one person, even if it's a YouTube video that you're watching going, damn, all right, now I'm going to go out in the garage and I'm going to do that thing that I've been putting off or, you know, now I got that confidence that I'm going to go out and do this or, or whatever. So that, yeah, I, I think that's what you do really well. I appreciate that, man. An accountability buddy. That's all I want to be. Yep. And even if I'm down, bro, and somebody messes me, I always try. I'll bet. Yeah. I mean, I know it's a car podcast, but bro, that's, that's what it's about for me. Yep. Just trying to hold people accountable. Cause it's that simple, right? Yep. I mean, nobody wants to do the hard stuff, but that's where you grow. Yep. So yeah, man. If you watch my videos, anybody out there, you'll see that there's two lights that hook up to an extension cord that runs from the house, that runs to the barn. And my barn, bro, I literally, and this is not a sarcastic, this is not a hype. I literally used to work in my car and waiters when it rained because the barn flooded. So like, and I used to not wear waiters until I started getting older and my skin started pruning. (laughs) But like, I just didn't allow a variable to stop me, right? Like. So, yeah, man. No, I love that. And I appreciate you talking about it. And I'll answer whatever car stuff you want. But again, anybody out there, you're feeling down, you're questioning it, bro. Hit me up. Yeah. I'll, I'll help you any way I can. I've never turned anybody down unless, you know, you come at me sideways. And I probably still won't say nothing bad about you, but I'll just shut you down and move on with my day. You I don't know, got time for the drama. <laughs> my day job, uh, you know, deals a lot with mental health. And I, I think it's so easy for me to relate to that when I watch your videos or when I see your post or even when I talk to you over the phone, because I, there's so many people, uh, you know, that could just use someone like you in their life, oh, right? Shoot, bro. Someone who's always Ooh. positive. I, I mean, <clears throat> I, I know you're not always positive. Yeah. You know, I'm human. I'm superhuman, yeah. bro. And I don't mean super power human. I mean, like I'm super normal. <laughs> I wish I was superhuman. But I mean, you know, there's so much negativity on Facebook. There's so much negativity on Instagram to just see a oh, positive post every once in a while and be like, damn, all right. Hey, I challenge anybody out there, go scroll through any DSM website. Even if somebody asks a stupid question, bro, I, it's not stupid to me, right? They're asking for a reason. And a lot of people will say, go to the forums, go to whatever. 
I can tell you from personal experience, I go to the forums and find a lot of answers. Yeah. But I find a lot of questions that weren't answered either, right? Yeah. So if I ask and you don't want to answer, my philosophy is just don't say anything. Yeah. Like I don't need to bring people down to bring me up, right? I've I've worked really hard on being a secure person. I'm very secure in who I am. And the only time I really have insecure issues is when I start letting the outside world affect me. Yeah. So I, I may take a break. I may take a break from social media. I do whatever it takes, but I always fight for my mental health over anything else. Because if I'm not there, I can't be there for my wife. I can't be there for my mom. Right. Racing's not going to matter. I can't be there to do Mitsu time stuff for these other interviews. So I always put my oxygen mask on first, like they say on the plane. And so sometimes I check out. But for the most part, bro, I just think there's, like you said, too much negativity or drama in this daggum world, man. It's insane. But that, that's what, I mean, Barn Built Dreams is really about, right? Like, you, you, oh, yeah, you don't need to constantly be doing whatever you're doing. You need to, to work on your car, but also live your life and have goals in both worlds. Bro, like, for example, I have, this weekend will be the fourth race that I'm missing this year. Yeah. And I, granted, I feel like I race more than most. And it's not like I have the fastest car in the world. So it's a little, you know, more probably financially I'm more financially able because I don't have to buy a new block every five passes or whatever, (laughs) but still like it does kind of slow my wind down in the sales. Like it bums me out a little bit. I want to be racing, bro. Like that's literally what I love to do that. I mean, there's nothing I love more than just waiting in the freaking, you know, staging lanes, getting up there, doing your thing. Like it's amazing. We all love it. But when you can't do it, life can't stop. Life don't care. Nobody cares, bro. That's a sad reality, but it's true. You have to care about yourself first. So I always try to find something to do, you know, whatever it may be. Like, for example, I'm talking to you. <laughs> <laughs> you know, so, we, yeah. we've, we've gone from strangers on the Internet to, uh, you know, hour-long phone calls once a week. So I love that. Hey, let's do a full confession <laughs> for the people. I literally talked with you longer the other day than I've talked <laughs> to any high school girlfriend in my entire life. I'm not even going to say how long because if my wife listens to this, she'll be jealous, bro. So <laughs> it's it no al- joke. It was almost a full day's work. <laughs> like well, literally, say that. my arm went to sleep <laughs> <laughs> for sure. But you and I so, are, have both been on the ends of our car being down for an extended period. And I, <laughs> I, I think a lot of DSM people can relate to this. Well, let's not just say DSM people. I, I know both of us are two G guys. That's easy for us yep. to say. Yep. Car people can relate to oh, this, yeah. that, you know, once you, I feel like once my car is down for a month, I'm ready to sell it. <laughs> <laughs> the old part out feeling. Yeah. Because I, I want to get back out there and get back to doing what I was having fun doing. But then, I see, you know, I mean, admittedly, it's YouTube videos that keep me from from selling my car. Yeah, for sure, bro. Right? Like, it makes it relatable. How, so, like, if you lose track of time, like, I've done this before. If you lose track of time and you're watching a video, I'll, I'll use Boosted Boys, for example. I hate to do that here because it's a Honda channel pretty much. But anyway, they'll have things like where the car will catastrophically fail. Mm-hmm. And if you just keep watching their videos, all of a sudden it's fixed. Yeah. And it really don't seem like it took that long. So, like, I guess by watching YouTube videos, I've also learned that, okay, maybe that breakdown's not as long as I think. It feels like it's really long while you're – like, right now, I've only not had my car – well, I guess it hasn't been running since last year, but it's only been a few months. But to me, it feels like six years, so I can't even imagine how you feel. (laughs) Like, how – so, I don't know, man. Like, I guess the one thing I've learned is you just have to be patient. Yeah. Yeah. And I practice a thing called aggressive patience. I just constantly work as hard as I can while trying to understand the timeline is out of my control. Yeah. Bro, because cars, like, I just bought a used engine. Everybody told me not to. I hate buying secondhand parts. And trying to, so Sean Werning said this to me, and I know it's an old saying, but he's like, basically you're jumping, what is it, jumping over a dime, or jumping over a dollar to save a dime, or something like that. Mm. Or basically, like, I ended up now my head has to get redone because it wasn't done right the first time. So like, that's another thing. Be careful what you buy secondhand. <laughs> <laughs> Here's a car related note. Don't buy other people's crap. Yep. I mean, it just always, it's bit me in the butt 90% of the time. So like when you're trying to save $400, you end up spending six later. Yep. 
sucks. And, but. you know, we've we've heard that story, not just from you, but we've heard it from a lot of people on the podcast. Like, yeah, you know, I cheaped out, did this, and then mm. end up having to rebuild the engine. To caveat on that, though, I've bought some expensive-ass name brand stuff, bro, that I've been – because, like, I've wanted to build a car I just built for, like, 20 years. And I'm trying to build it piece by piece. And yeah. I've bought some stuff and like that I've waited 20 years to buy, bro. And you go to put it on and it fits – terribly Mm -hmm. or the quality is so like i'm sure a lot of that's like you know related to the recent times but it's almost like a catch-22 because i bought and i know a lot of people have had bad luck with these but like the arc 2 brand new out of the box didn't work well guess what i had back surgery so i couldn't like put it on my car so i didn't know it was bad by the time i came around to put it on and found out it was bad it was past the warranty or when they'll look at it couldn't return so i just i literally just donated six hundred dollars so, like, that stuff hurts, too. <laughs> For sure. I mean, think about how many people have donated money to ARC, too, and the, God knows how, oh, whoever makes that bro. Dynatech or whatever. I don't know. Yeah, bro. And, like, growing up, for me, that was, like, a sworn product. And I don't know if things have changed. I don't know if they've gotten worse or whatever, but I didn't have luck with it. That sucked. <laughs> Mine overheated, even though I put it in what I thought was going to be the a cool place, cool-ish place. So bro, a- I went through all this work to put it in the cabin because I heard of the heat issue (laughs) and then I put it in the spot. I couldn't reach it to adjust things. (laughs) So literally they're like, Oh, you need to, you know, up this or change that. And I couldn't even read it. I'm like, that wasn't smart, but part of the learning process. Yeah. See, that's another thing about my YouTube channel. I always try to show my flaws. I, so many people try to make things look perfect. And I always, I always start off with, this is not a tutorial because I just get by guy, but, I, I have no shame in showing the mistakes I've made on anything, bro. That's part of it, right? Who wants to look perfect? I mean, I that that's what makes, you know, it, like you said, makes it relatable because I think back to like other YouTube, like you talked about Boost and Boys, they blow up an engine. Well, they, you know, what they don't tell you is that maybe that was their fault. Maybe they left something right. loose. Like right. I, I think back to CSM TV when Aaron blew up that thirty five hundred dollar head that he just got. <laughs> you couldn't waterboard that out of me. I, there's no way I would tell you about that, bro. And see, I think that's super. Well, okay, some people think I went too far when I told everybody I pooped my pants, but you know what I'm <laughs> saying. It's part of life, bro. Couldn't make it to the toilet. It happened, and guess what? That was the day I won my first drag race. So who's laughing now, bro? Yep. <laughs> All you gotta do is poop your pants, and you'll win your drag race. That's a, that's the key. You heard it here, folks. <laughs> we need to come up with a custom set of baby wipes. Barn built dreams. Oh, dookie yeah. wipers. There you go. You know what I'm saying? Let's put that on the to-do list. <laughs> Add it to the products. So, well, you know, we've talked a lot about your cars, but let's talk about your cars. Tell us a little okay. bit about them. Okay. The first one I have is terribly uncomfortable to drive around, but it's my cruiser car. It's a... Uh, 97 GST all-wheel drive swapped. It's as stock as can be. I'm almost positive it runs a second slower than it's supposed to, even at stock levels. But my wife absolutely loves it. It's pretty cool looking. It's got fender flares, all that type of stuff. She loves it, bro. She calls it the ice cream car. She actually calls it her car. But for some reason, she turns right way too fast. Mm. She will take out every curb and pothole and dirt on the side of the road. That's... (laughs) That's her car, apparently. And then um, my other one was also an Eclipse front-wheel drive, but it's all-wheel drive swapped. And that one has that, – that one's my baby. That one is the one I tore down to a bare shell and wire-wheeled the entire bottom of the car, wow. you know, did all that. Never painted a car before. So, like, when you see it in person and you're like, so the person who painted that didn't know what they are doing. You're freaking right. They did it. <laughs> <laughs> like not a chance, but guess what? I did it and Saved I tried it. a lot it. of money. Bro, it was way more tedious than I thought. And I learned so much. And again, right? Go outside your comfort zone. That was way outside my comfort zone. And uh, yeah, man, I'm just trying to build. And again, not a cliche thing, but my dream car. Yeah. So like I've had the roll cage done. Um Again, Warren was a big one on that. I crashed before I seen Warren crash, but seeing Warren crash on the drag strip, I'm like, safety's first. I, I'm getting older. I can't be risking the old bumps on the noggin type thing. So my wife and I made sure we got that in there. Like, honestly, when I look at that, okay, 
when I look at that car sometimes and I'm like walking up to it, like if I went to the bathroom at the drag strip or something like that, sometimes when I'm walking back, I have to stop and be like, I did that. Yeah. Like it feels surreal. And the whole reason I, again, share my journey is just to show people they can do their version of what I'm doing. And it ain't even got to be car related. I don't care. I just, I feel genuinely proud, bro. Like, I mean, all the flaws are mine. All the cool stuff's mine. <laughs> I, I definitely, it, it, it is certainly a car to be proud of. I mean, you, you, you know, like you said, you're balling on a budget, but you used some of the best parts available in our community. I mean, you have a Hawkman fabrication cage for oh, God's sake. Yep. You have the, the Raven fab fancy, uh, water pipe. Oh yeah. Magnus yeah, yeah, yeah. intake. I mean, it, it's, it's no expense spared, but it's something that everyone can do, right? Oh, bro. Like, so I, I know my car is down right now and my head is over at boosting performance, getting looked at. It's going to be handled and we'll be back out in no time. Like I know that, but so many people I think get wrapped up in trying to make the perfect car. And now what I'm, I'm not saying to like cut corners where safety is involved. I'm not saying (laughs) cut corners where like, you know, you're going to hurt something on your car. But I feel like if more people didn't tackle the whole entire thing at one time, they wouldn't feel so overwhelmed. That's just how I feel. Yeah. That's why so many cars are on jack stands, right? They get overwhelmed taking on too much at one time. And quite honestly, I mean, I guess it might sound hypocritical because I technically took my whole car apart as well. But I I knew what I was doing, right? Like I didn't, I didn't make sure I had a billet block, you right. know? I didn't make sure I – like. I still put it back together with everything I had. I just put it back together with the cleanest stuff that I had or the best usable stuff that I had. And like, even this year, you think I don't, bro, I want to run a 10 second pass so bad I can taste it. Mm -hmm. And for a lot of people that may sound easy. Well, I'm living proof. And I got like 15 years in the game saying I can't do it yet. (laughs) Like, and I mean, yet, because I will this year, but I have an FP red turbo, right? It's going to max out at some point soon. It doesn't stop me from trying. Right. Like, I'm not going to park my car at jack stands because I don't have the turbo I want. Hell no, bro. I got stuff to do. I got races to win. I'll win every 11-5 class I got to until, you know, I can get my next turbo. I don't care. I just want to be out there, man. So you so get your hands I, on a black or a zero. That's what I'm saying, bro. Like, if you guys got one out there that's secondhand, don't hit me up, though. Because I don't <laughs> want any crap. <laughs> So, yeah, man, like, it is a dream car of mine, and I'm at the point now where, like, um, again, I'm very secure, bro. Like, I used to, when I was younger, I'm sure we all did this, right? Like, drive our cars around and hope people see us, and, Mm -hmm. like, I can drive my cars around the back roads where I live and not see a single person and enjoy it 50 million times more than I used to when I used to want people's attention. Good. So, like, for me, again, I know everybody's different, but I, of course, buy the cool parts when I can. I, of course, try to, you know, work with people when I can. But, bro, it's more about enjoying it than it is worrying about that stuff. For, sure. For me. Yeah. But I, you know, like, I want to go back to what you said before about not taking your car completely apart all at once, right? Because don't you feel like that's when a lot of people lose their motivation? I, I'm staring at my garage, and I have the shell on jack stands, no suspension, my engine's, oh, yeah. you know, in a garbage bag, and I'm like, you know what, maybe I sh- I've done too much here. And it's really oh. hard to, to bring that motivation back in. Bro, it's – it so like like you said, right, it's cool to have attaboys. And I feel like when you tear your car apart like that, it's harder to get the attaboys from yourself because you get to a point where you just see the work that needs to be done instead of the work you've done. Mm-hmm. And the only reason I can say that with confidence is because I did it when I – bro, that's probably why my car's together now. Because I did that before. I was like, I'm going to tear out all the wiring. I'm tearing out, you know, every body panel. And I had no clue what I was doing. And I did exactly what you said. I got to a point where I'm like, oh, can't get this back together. (laughs) So, yeah, bro, just do it a piece at a time if you can. And I know it's easier said than done, but it'll you'll get so much more out of your car being able to enjoy it every once in a while than not being able to enjoy it for five years. For sure. Especially when you're like – if those guys like I'm talking about that, you know, do buy the $3,000 turbos and the whatever, they spent all that money and now they're getting nothing out of it, bro, that, that'll that hurt anybody. Yeah. Again, though, that'd be if me you guys want a $500 turbo, I, I would still be that. I'd still be just as upset. 
it just it does hurt right when you're look, looking at all these shine okay i'll tell everybody this and y'all can disagree with me if you want but i put my car as clean together or put my car together as clean as i possibly could and i try to keep everything as clean as i could one time down the road some of that stuff don't matter mm. i hate to tell you guys <laughs> that was a part that hurt me because i repainted everything right like i got most people powder coat things again i'm very open I'm like, I can't afford it right now. So I spray painted everything, wire wheeled everything. Like, bro, but I took my time. Two times at the track, I'm like, you can't even tell. Mother huffer. <laughs> <laughs> so that's another thing, right? Taking it apart, like, yeah, it's cool. But unless you're, if you're going to drive it, some of that stuff's going to get dirty, man. That's just the way it works. Yep. And when my engine blew and it put holes in the block, I have oil in places that I didn't even know oil could go. <laughs> so to get a catch pan, y'all. So, yep, that's where I stand right now. Putting a catch pan on actually is the next project I have when my car's together. I have it sitting in the garage. I didn't want to be that guy. Yeah, we don't, none of us want to be that guy, especially at the shootout, right? I mean, if we could limit that, I definitely feel like it'd be a game changer. Yeah. I'm just saying. I know it's out of our control for certain things to happen, but the oil downs definitely took away from the spectator side of things is what I, you know, the consensus was. Yeah. And quite I'm, honestly, every time I had downtime, I went to watch, there was nothing happening because they were typically doing cleanup. Right. I, I so love like, tractors. I just don't like seeing them go back and forth up and down. Drag strip. <laughs> I mean, they're not quite as fast. Right. And they're squeaky. I'm just saying. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man. So, uh, I wanted to say this really quick, like, um, I know we're talking about my cars or whatever. Pictures don't speak for the realisticness. Mm -hmm. So anybody who sees pictures of my car, I always try to make it look good, but I don't ever put a filter on it. So when you see it in person, don't be a hater. <laughs> it is very barn built. <laughs> and again, I'm still proud. And yes, there's lots of stripper glitter on everything. Good. So I just want y'all to know that. Well, you know, now that we talked about your cars, I want to talk about what your goals are for 2024. Either, you know, we could talk about the cars, we could talk about the YouTube channel, we could talk about both. Okay, let's go cars first. Uh, well, I have, like I said, four, I stacked up a schedule that was so much, it would overwhelm the average person. But um, like I said, bro, I believe in what I'm trying to do, whether it be the content whether it be being at the right track at the right time, giving a kid an opportunity to be a part of my so-called pit crew, you know, like meeting these new people, networking. So like, I was like, I just want to be at as many tracks as possible. I want to say I had like 10 to 12 races on the schedule. And um, so that was a big goal, right? To make it to as many races as possible. But without getting too greedy, I'd love to end the season with three wins. And, I don't even have a specific class. I eventually want to get to the point where I can win some heads up races, but I'm pretty sure my budget's not going to allow it this year. So I'm not going to be too picky. You know, I'll do some index classes or whatever. And then as a side goal, I bro, I have to hit the 10 this year. Like that is not escaping me again. Yeah. I don't care if I have to borrow a jet car to pull my car 10 seconds. <laughs> like something is happening, bro. <laughs> like it has to. And you guys will know because you will see me doing cart cartwheels all the way up to an attempted front handspring where I fall, but I tried because I'm going to be so flipping excited, dude. It's going to feel surreal. So that's the car side of things. You heard it here first. If he runs a 10, he's going to do the Carl Edwards flip out the driver's side window. <laughs> <laughs> Good luck, y'all. You know what, bro? Challenge accepted. There you go. I'm going to start training him right now. <laughs> and I, uh, I definitely love popping bottles. Um, so one thing I have trouble with is celebration. Like, I don't know if it's my upbringing. I don't know what it is, right? Like something will happen. I've wanted my whole life and it's like, Oh, cool. So I noticed that when I won my first spectators drag race or whatever, cause I don't know, some people like think the world's going to change cause they accomplished their goal, or at least I did. And I realized I was trying to celebrate for the wrong reasons. So like now I try to take in my accomplishments because sometimes you forget how hard you work to get them. Right. So one thing I do every time I either hit a PB or I win a race is I pop a little tiny bottle of champagne. Again, go. another another product I'm hoping to create one day, Farm Built Dreams Celebration Bottles. There you go. Probably have to do it with apple juice or something, you know what I'm saying? But <laughs> we'll figure that out. As long as it fizzes, we'll yep. do Pepsi. I don't care. Some of the sparkling grape juice. Bro, I'm saying 
as long as that sucker pops, let's do it. <laughs> and then I guess as far as the YouTube channel, shoot. I don't know that I have a specific goal. Um, again, I'd, as far as like the typical side of things, right? Like a subscriber amount or a view amount or anything like that. I don't get too wrapped up in that all that much. Mm -hmm. Sometimes I see view counts on stupid videos and I'm like, really, bro? Like y'all will watch somebody throw a cherry at somebody's eyeball and it'll get 10 million views and I will bust my hump <laughs> and it gets two. But that's the, just the nature of the beast, right? Unfortunately. So I try not to get too wrapped up in that. But again, if, if I had to put a goal on the YouTube channel, it would just reach more people and just show them that it's possible, whatever they're into. Ult my ultimate goal is my channel doesn't have to be car related. I know you get put in a niche, niche, whatever that word is. But um, yeah, bro, I just want somebody to see me doing my thing and they'll be like, oh, he did it. That dumb country bumpkin who <laughs> works out of a freaking barn. And if I had to write out a paragraph, you'd see I don't, you know, I don't grammar so hot, <laughs> all those types of things. Like, but it don't hold me back. I don't ever let anything hold me back. I don't make excuses. And I just, I want to influence people to not make excuses for themselves. Yep. Get out there and freaking do it, man. That's, that's my goal with the YouTube channel. Just encourage people, fire people up. And also, um, just so everybody knows, I'm very aware Gumpy is the star of my channel. <laughs> for those of you who don't know, Gumpy is my golden retriever. He's the main character. He's, bro, he's like what's called an attention thief. <laughs> if I have him at the track, it's like I don't exist. So, yes, I'm very aware Gumpy's the star. <laughs> I just want you guys to know that I know. When we, uh, you know, I know you talked about your car 2024 list, but I hope, uh, you know, at the top of your list, and you just are too humble to say it, is to uh, be number one on the Tunes and Tunes YouTube All Stars Mitsu Times list. <laughs> hey, brother. All right. You know, I'm not too humble to say anything. So, like, I'm, I'm very humble in the way, like, I, I try not to be a braggadocious douche, but, like, <laughs> <laughs> um, bro, I'm super far proud of how far I came. And to me, that's only proof of how far I can go. Yeah. The only, like I said, the only holdback is remembering I have to be patient enough to freaking let things happen when they're supposed to. I get really wrapped up in trying to force things, and sometimes I create problems for myself. But I'm shooting for number one in everything I do. Uh to settle for anything less is just silly to me. Yeah. I think if it, I'm so scared to chase some of the goals I have, which tells me I'm chasing the right goals. Yeah, exactly. But like heads up racing for me, bro. Like that's a scary goal. Cause shoot, when I got out of racing the first time, cause I took like a 10 year hiatus, not on purpose. I just armied and you know, changed some things when I came back and everybody was like, Oh, 10 second pass ain't crap. When that was like my ultimate goal, I was like, Oh wow. Things have changed. Cause now most cars come from the factory doing stuff that, you know, I still haven't done. <laughs> so like JJ's arm drop was a big one for me. I showed up with a car. I just wrecked. I had a bent control arm, all these things, but you know what I did that most people didn't do, bro. I showed up Yeah. and that was the first race I ever went rounds in and it was heads up, hand drop at it. And I was like, Oh, I could do this. Like I, like I could really do this. And so like, I know it's possible. And my car is a million times faster than it used to be. So, like, again, it's possible. I just – okay, let me ask you this. If you kept track of my build at all, did you know the expectations of my car when I got it running? Because most people didn't because I never said, like, I guess. Yeah. You know, type of thing. Like, I didn't put out there – I got to the track, and if people were shocked that my car was slow or whatever, like – and they were like, oh, I thought you did all this because, like, oh, you haven't even earned your roll cage yet or whatever at first. My first pass was, like, 15-something. Well, that's part of shaking down a car, y'all. Yeah. That's part of going to the next level. Like, it just is what it is. It can't happen overnight. And if it can, good for you. It hasn't for me. <laughs> and if I could just uh, do a, a little bit of a self-promotion, he also submitted yeah, yeah. that time slip. <laughs> so don't In case be afraid all, to submit your time slip. Seriously, bro, like, I, I, I've i never gotten a big deal behind that, right? Like, uh, okay, here's something I hate when people do. Don't downplay your goal based on something somebody else has done, mm -hmm. or your accomplishment, I, rather. So, like, if you've never ran a 13-second pass and you just ran your first one, screw everybody else if they say it's not fast, bro. Like, truly, because I downplayed a lot of things for a long time, and it's silly. 
So definitely, bro, submit your first time slip because guess what? It just gives you something to beat yourself. Right. Like it absolutely you should submit your slip, bro, for real. Let's keep Mitsu times growing. Let's keep, you know, let's keep people chasing their ET goals or whatever, mile per hour goals. I don't care. Think, think about how, like, if you're out there listening, you've got a slip and you just don't want to submit it because you're not going to be number one. Like, I, I do get that. But also, how think about how good it would feel to watch you go from 800th overall to the next time you go out and you keep improving, you keep improving. And a couple months later, now you're 400th overall. You could be like, damn, I really went through that list. And I'm not saying this just because you said that. I literally just experienced that because I did that. Yep. <laughs> it was like, I think the first time on the 2G list, I don't even, I don't want to miss say or whatever, but I was like 150 or 60, the first thing. And then I was like 101 or something like that. And then I was, the highest I got was 87. And then of course, since then I've dropped to 88, I think, but who cares, bro? Like now I got something else to chase. Yeah. Like fire me up. Let's go. Like, just think about all those micro goals. Like, man, I, you know, I, I, it doesn't even, I would even call them micro goals. I'm going to take, I'm going to cut that part out. Think about, <laughs> think about that goal of, you know, there's so many different, there's 30 different lists. Let's say your car falls on eight of them. That's about the average. And, okay. and you're, you're number 88. You could be like, damn, all, all I got to do is shoot for 50, right? I, I get to 50. Now you got a new goal. All right, now I'm going to get to 30. And the gap's usually not as big as you think. Right. If you take the time to look at the list, like 87 is like very attainable for me, you know? So is 80. So like, I will take what you said and I'll spin it. I think micro goals are good. Some people said like, Imagine if I just came out swinging and I'm like, I have to hit a 10 second pass or death. Yeah. I don't know, bro. Like, guess what? I'd be crying and my car would seem useless because the first goal realistically needed to be get it to the fricking track. Yeah. Because <laughs> think about how many people Harley in your time in these, you know, in this community, how many people have said, bro, I'm going to take down the red demon and <laughs> yeah, you know, easier said than done. Yeah. I feel like a lot of people, so like, especially nowadays, and I hate speaking for the world, but so like, if you just see, I won't even use the red demon. I'll use my dumb self. If you see me at the racetrack or whatever, you have no idea how I got to where I'm at. Right. And it's easy to forget that people have worked a long time to get where they are. So when you just see everything and it looks ironed out and it looks done, it's easy to be like, Ooh, they just got it made or whatever. Well, guess what, dude? Devin's been racing that car, well, a version of that car, literally since I can remember. Right. I mean, literally, since I was in DSM and then YouTube came out and I seen a video of that car and I'm like, a what? <laughs> and back then it seemed impossible for it to do what it's doing, let alone now. And I feel like a lot of people, bro, this used to upset me. And yeah, I'm a little bit of a fanboy, whatever. When he hadn't ran a six yet, and I used to see comments like, just run the six already. Why aren't you doing it right. if it's that easy, bro? <laughs> like, I don't, I didn't even know Devin on any level at that time. And I could already promise you, nobody wanted that six more than him. Like, what do you think he's doing going out there and like, no, nah, I'm just not going to do it today? Yeah. No, bro. He's it's just not out. easy. Yeah. Like, some of that stuff just takes the time it takes again, right? Like, you can't force something to happen. Yeah. You can work really hard, but like, you're not in control of the outcome. That's where a lot of people get lost, bro. Yeah, people knocking on the red demon or whatever. Like, you try it. That's what I'm saying. Like, I'm... think about Rafe breaking that world record. Like, oh, you know, he, he got a seven five. Now, why haven't you run like a seven four five? Like, dude, yeah, the guy just broke the fucking record that had been in place for eight years. Let's let's just be proud of that. Freaking. That's what I'm saying. Like, I don't know if it's me or the world that makes people feel like they can't celebrate, right? I hope they celebrate his ass off, bro, because what a freaking accomplishment, dude. And not only that, he's freaking awesome. So, like, again, it's just not as easy as y'all think. Yeah. I, I, there, it, it's just hard work, time at the track. And sometimes, you know, luck is a factor, right? Like, you're at the right track at the right day on the right temperature and the right prep. And just uh, everything is right. And that happens so rare at least in my case, I don't want to speak for everybody else, but I would guess for 99% of everybody else too, right? Yeah. 
that's why you got to go to the track as often as you can get that seat time. So you're dialed in when that moment comes and bro, there's nothing better than just, even if you didn't get a time slip, sometimes you just know your car did something that it hasn't done before. And the first time I ran an 11, admittedly, I don't know what I thought was going to happen, <laughs> but like I, it, it was still like a two foot 60 or two, two second, one. 60 foot or something, two, one or something. I was so focused on that. My pass felt so slow. So maybe that's kind of contradictive because I thought the first time I ran on 11, I'd be ecstatic. And then I got back and it was like 11, six or whatever. And I'm like, mm. I was like, Oh, that was on 11. <laughs> oh shit. I'm supposed to be happy. <laughs> like it just felt terrible. So I guess there's a spin to everything, but, but yeah, I, bro, just, those... I just feel like the guys who are, you know, the Devons, the Rafes, the, the Aaron Gregory's, those guys don't get enough credit because people think not just the community people, but, you know, car people, people outside the car community, they think that, you know, they just lucked into that or that, um, Bro, you know, so, they're just a driver and, and the car was put together by who knows. Dude, so Ben Hockman, this dude, again, started off super business oriented. He, he was just doing my roll cage. Uh, we instantly developed a relationship by my annoying persistence is what I'll call it because <laughs> so I'm like, Ben, you need me for something. I know you do. Whatever. When he took me to, I got to go to World Cup and crew for him. That was like a very eye-opening experience to the reality of, you know, what these bigger, it was my first personal experience, right? And there's many guys that are out there doing big things or whatever, but I, I just have never been a part of it. I Again, people vastly underestimate what it takes even between rounds. Yeah. Like, Cause at the, at the power level, Ben's at like, bro, like weird stuff's happening sometimes. Right. Like, cause not everything's perfect and drain and catch can't just, you're, you got to double check everything at those power levels, nuts, bolts, like bro, like there, it's an insane amount of stuff that I can't even fathom. Mm -hmm. And I was a part of it. And it's still hard to process cause it just takes so much, bro. Like everything has to be dialed and you're going almost 200 miles per hour. Your life's completely at risk. Like the adrenaline part of it is Ben would come back, bro. And like, by the time I got to him in a golf cart, I felt like I had his adrenaline rush. <laughs> like, because it's just hard to, my camera couldn't even process the noise his cars was making. It just glitched out. Yeah. And when you're up there and that fire's blowing and he's finally getting ready to get unhooked and he's going through the water box and my car can't do a freaking burnout yet. So like just being there when they send it through the bro, like I love that. Like I live for that. Yeah. So having him, I got to see him hit his PB and, uh, bro, it's just, I, I don't, it's again, right. Something you have to experience. I don't, I don't even have the words for it. You ever it's watch, a lot of freaking work. You ever watch NASCAR and they have those heart rate monitors on the, on the uh, driver camera. So you can yes. kind of see, I would love to do that Ooh. to like Ben or Devin or somebody just to see what is it in the staging lanes? What is it at the line? What is it, you know, at the 60 foot, like, how does how much does the heart rate fluctuate for those type those guys? They, I mean, really, like you said, oh. I mean it's really life or death, bro. Like, so Ben, uh, the week or a couple weeks before World Cup, he sent a pass. We were in Illinois, and it, it got a little wonky or whatever. He had to throw the shoot type thing. Mm -hmm. Like, yeah, those passes, right? Like, I now you actually got me curious. That might be actually something worth looking into to see if we can get some people to do that type of thing. Yeah. I, I think they wear like the the chest thing band. I was I was just wondering because like uh, I used to do yoga and they had a heart monitor type thing that you could wear. Yeah. On your ooh, now you got me. That's actually a really I would genuinely okay. Here's how nervous I got when I had just got back into drag racing. My car was still manual or whatever. My first time pulling up to the staging and uh, mind you, I'm not comparing the whatever I had 13 second car to a seven second pass. But just for myself, my, I was so nervous pulling back up to the staging lights. I had trouble holding the clutch in. Just not even nervous, just excited. Yeah. Like, it wasn't nerves, but, like, just I'm excited, bro. Like, I'm so excited to be I'm so excited to send my car. So, like, yeah, if you take that to the next level and you have a seven or whatever, six-second car, like, that's actually a good project we should look into. Good talk. Both, <laughs> both of my very first two passes um... – I red lit because I didn't think the trans was going to hold me. Okay. Or, or the foot brake was going to hold me, I should say. So I just let off and, and 
went down and out. Yeah, I mean, I knew it was going to suck because obviously I was going to go before the other person was ready and before the light was green, but I was like, you know what? I just want to go down the fucking track. Bro, and it felt so good, didn't it? Yeah. See? It's hard to – I don't know. I know it's not for everybody, bro, but, like, I live to race, so I mess with that bad. (laughs) I I feel like, you know, we – this podcast sometimes doesn't help, but, um, you know, we just want you to, I don't know, put your car to the limit. We want you to fill the car at the limit. It doesn't have to be drag racing. It could be autocross. It could be time attack, circuit racing stuff. It could be whatever. Spectator drags. Just go out there and have fun and and represent the community. Like, I, you know, Bro. your car being really pretty does – represent the community well but also the you know the whole the motto of mitsubishi in the 90s was the spirit of competition we 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 want to keep that going and as far as spectator drags i know every track's different whatever one of the coolest experiences i've had racing was that and it was fourth of july weekend or something like that too well there were six thousand people in the stands which anything i've ever done in my life that's a lot (laughs) <laughs> like I felt like a freaking superstar, bro. Even if they booed me, I didn't care. Like, bro, like just being in, again. I guess you either probably have the competitive edge or you don't. But you also don't know until you try it. Right. Like, bro, try it. What do you have to lose? Like a lot of guys that I talk to, they're like, I don't want to break my car. But you'll still freaking do a full tilt pull on the highway doing 190. Yeah. Like, you think that can't hurt your car? Oh, the track surface is too sticky. Whatever. Like. You don't have to go balls to the walls either. Yeah. Right. Like get out there. Just, tr- I feel like too many people make too many excuses or, you know, predetermined things are bad before they try it. Just try it. And if you try it and you don't like it, then, then I'll shut up, but try it. <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, I? Also, you know, roll through the beam and you don't have to launch it hard every single time. Just, and if you had an auto car and you haven't launched it, you probably won't be able to anyway. Cause I was the same way the first entire year I owned an auto car. <laughs> so maybe that's just a me thing, you know? No, I, I uh, think, uh, you know, especially if somebody who their first time on a, on a converter, on a high style converter. Yeah. Whew, we should definitely do a tech video on that. Well, I'm obviously not the guy to do that because I couldn't get my car to spool up, spool up for three years, bro. <laughs> I, uh, I vastly underestimated what it took to run an auto. Not because of me, but because of, you know, the populace. Mm-hmm. Put your foot on the brake and send it. Yeah, bro. Not that easy. Like, I'm not saying once you get ironed out, it may not, you know, be smooth sailing, I guess. I don't know. I've never had a car ironed out. But <laughs> <laughs> for me, every time I go up there is a new challenge. Yeah. So, oh, yeah. While we're on it, it seems like backtracking. But I've that has been the biggest issue I've had for some reason, bro. My brakes. I've just had so many issues because I've had, what are the, what are those lines called? The new lines, braided lines or whatever. Yeah. I've heard a lot of people say they feel spongy or whatever, but I bought the kit, bro. I've had fitment issues. I've had leak issues. Again, some of them are my own fault. Some of them people on the internet are like, you're doing this wrong. You're doing that wrong. So again, I guess I'm saying that to say sometimes buying the expensive part isn't the answer. Sometimes it is installer error, but you really have to be double checking your car because the last pass I made when I got back, of course I didn't know at the time I load my car up on the trailer and I just so happened to see some weird film on the inside of my rim. And it was one of my bleeders leaking and it wasn't because it was loose. Like the bleeder itself, it was where it went into the caliper and I had already tightened them so much that, I had broke one and I'm like, bro, am I, I just assumed I didn't know what I was doing at that point. I'm like, I'll pay somebody to fix them. (laughs) Same issue. It didn't matter. So just be careful, be safe, double check your stuff. I think, uh, there's a lot of people who say this and it makes sense. Most races are lost in the garage. Mm. That, that is something I found to be true. So as far as car stuff goes, do take the time to do it right. And that's coming from a guy who rushes everything. Right. So well, like, you, you know, you you bring up a good point because, um, you know, just because you bought the expensive parts doesn't necessarily mean you're going to be able to replicate whatever, yeah. you know, like 
if if Devin came out with a full build list of the Red Demon version two and you bought all those parts, there's nothing saying you're going to go a six. See, bro, I've actually wanted to do that experiment, not be not to be like an you know a jerk, but to show people it's not as simple as just buying the stuff. Right. Like it's just not. Like, and if you want to find out how much it's not, go talk to any one of those people at the track and <laughs> you'll feel like they're speaking Spanish, bro. Cause like, it don't even make sense what they're saying sometimes. Mm -hmm. And it can be the simplest thing. I, I just, I, I love being around it, bro. Cause I love trying to learn how to make my car go faster, but also a lot of it goes over my head. So, I mean, it's not that easy. It's how I feel when I talk to the Morrisons about like, when they start talking about like, pressure changes and air doing this and blah, blah, blah. I'm like, man, if I could just shave off a little bit of that knowledge, I would just be right. so much better off as a person. Give, give me a fraction. <laughs> See, bro, I try to, I try to make up what I lack in knowledge and hard work. And sometimes it works out and sometimes I fail my butt off. So like Kenny Klein helps me constantly with my car. Um, he's been working with me for a couple of years now. Sometimes when I send him a message of what's going on, like, so like, that's one problem. Okay. Transparency. That's one problem I face a lot. I'm the only one in my barn. I'm the only one on my property most of the time. So like, I only have me to bounce ideas off of. Mm -hmm. Guess what, bro? <laughs> You're not getting much knowledge from this guy. <laughs> like I know all the basics, but I'll message Kenny and he'll be like, did you try this? And I'll try it and it'll work. And I'm like, bro, I hate you. Yeah. I love you. But like, I hate you. Like that was so, I mean, again, though, he has 20 years experience. So like, I do think the whole point of a community has become so obvious to me over the last, you know, year or so. Yeah. Like being able to bounce ideas off these other guys has been game changing for me, bro. Yep. I and remember, I just want to be that for the next people, you know? Yeah. Oh yeah, for sure. I remember one time I sent Kenny a picture uh, because I wasn't getting the sensor wasn't reading correctly, and he was about to log in to tune my car. I'm like, he, he said, send me a picture of it. I sent him a picture. He's like, oh, dude, the plug's backwards, whatever, blah, blah. I'm like, how can you tell that from the fucking picture? <laughs> okay, are you like this? I'm also a worst-case scenario guy, only on my car. <laughs> if I'm driving my car down the road and it dies, I'm like, oh, the computer's fried. I don't even check a fuse. <laughs> I go right to the worst-case scenario. So, like, it's weird. I can help diagnose other people's cars better than mine. Mm -hmm. As soon as it's my own car, bro, I just blank. So you got to work on your resilience. That's called catastrophizing. <laughs> Listen here, bro. We're to talk cars, <laughs> not to school. Okay. <laughs> I don't even know what the hell you just said. <laughs> it's easy. I'm going to go Google that. And now I'm mad at you. It's a slippery slope. The Google catastrophizing. Oh gosh. Dang it, Josh. Yep. Now you hurt my feelings. I'm just saying, bro. Or, uh, you know, worst case scenarioing everything. To be fair, though, I had a lot of help with my recent situation, and it turned out I wasn't over exaggerating. Right. So every once in a while, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. I feel like it's been really cool having failures be recently. Yeah. Because, again, having the community, right? Like, I've learned probably more in the last two years than I did in the first. 15 or whatever it is. So like I'm su people. Okay. I talked to you about this and I'll say this on here. Most people don't know how grateful I am. I say, thank you. A lot of people do, but like a lot of people say it in passing, but I've learned that time is the most valuable thing on this planet. So anybody who donates time to me, bro, like I'm grateful. So if you've ever donated time to me, thank you. I appreciate y'all supporting a young up and coming country bumpkin from the barn. Let's go Look baby. Snapper. I'm just saying, talk to me now. <laughs> we can do this, Josh. So uh, what events can we uh, see you at, <laughs> even even if it's not with the car, just to uh, you know talk to you in person, talk to you about the YouTube channel? Pooh, Boba. Well, um, how about this? We'll put a guarantee for the first event I'll be at, you know, at the end of April. And I'm not going to try to say this. Uh, stupid, but if I do, my bad. And Hebron, Hebron, whatever. Yeah, Ohio. I don't know how Ohio people. I, you know, I thought the shootout was in Milan this whole time, and it turns out it's in Milan. Oh, jeez. Lady cut my hair. Says so I, I love when you guys come here because you always mispronounce Milan. You, <laughs> you were like glad Milan? you said it first. Yeah. <laughs> 
So yeah, bro. I mean, I'll definitely be there. I mean, an obvious one, car, no car, the shootout. Um, I've been in the shootout three years in a row. I've been in the shootout three years in a row with a car that wasn't ready to do anything. Mm -hmm. My ultimate goal is that's my Daytona 500. If you guys don't get that, go look up Dale Earnhardt. So I want to show up with my car ready, but I'll be there no matter what. And then I, I don't really know, bro. Um, some of the races don't make sense for me just to go spectate at. You know, they're too far away. We're definitely so. going to be – both Both Harley and I will be at the uh, August uh, RRT oh, yeah, yeah. Wild Evo track rental. Yep, for sure. Well, um, I'm going to pay for Harley's course. ticket. He fucking better be there. <laughs> <laughs> hey, bro, we got to go support the boys. That's right. And, uh, hope to see shit tons of you guys out there, man. Um, either way, I know it's going to be a good time. Those guys don't, you know, do lame shit that I've seen, so it's got to be fun, bro. Probably, probably try to do FL2K the same way. I feel like, because when is FL2K? October, uh, I don't think they've released the official dates, but it's like the first weekend of October. Okay. See, for me, it's hard, right, because of variables. Like, if my car's running and there's a race I can go to, like, I'm a racer first, I think. So, like, you know, which I don't, I don't even know my schedule now. I literally didn't even know there was a race this weekend, and my wife was like, she said something about the calendar. So I looked at the calendar. I'm like, man, there's a race this week. She's like, oh, shit, I was trying not to let you see that. <laughs> she didn't want me to get too bummed out. But, yeah, man, if my car's ready, I literally will be everywhere. And I'm talking, like, everywhere. Florida, Georgia, anywhere within, a, you know, 12, 15 hours, I'm going. Yeah, I'm going. Trophies are like Pokemon for me. I have to catch them all or at least try. Yeah. So that's where I'll be, you know. With or without the car, that's you can see him in person. Yeah, you you can meet this old this old guy. He, he's something. That, you know what? I'm glad we're doing this over the the phone, bro. Because I've always been told I had a face for radio. <laughs> <laughs> so I don't know. You get you got a pretty faithful YouTube following, so you must have a face for both. Hey, bro! All three of my followers, I love you guys. <laughs> <laughs> Boys for life. Yeah, all, man. Y'all get uh, tickets to dinner. You know what I'm saying? I want to. I do want to do an event eventually, like my own event. Yeah. But I've learned that I'm a little farther away from that than I thought, and that's okay. Um, but I, maybe I'll do like a car meet, you know, something like that. Yeah. Again, I don't really like car shows. I feel like you know everybody. It's just not my scene. I, I don't hate on it. I still do them. So like, may sound contradictive, but. I certainly want to, wouldn't want to judge it because everybody cries and, you know, nobody knows the real criteria or whatever, but at least a car gathering, a barn built dreams car gathering. And I do kind of want to do it this year. Yeah. I don't have it worked out. So like, it may not seem like I'm that serious about it, but details to come. So stay tuned. Free camping in the yard. Hey bro, don't hate on it until you try it. You, you'll come here and mess around and not want to leave the barn. Like, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? It's addicting. Yep. Oh Yeah. You can meet my raccoons. Oh, yeah. See what I'm saying? Now you're addicted. Yep. Good time all around. And barn cats. <laughs> hey, I'm glad you said that, bro, because when I say barn cats, most people are like, what? They don't get it. You probably don't get it. I do get it. Okay. But I always say that because when I used to post about my raccoons, people used to, like, start shit. <laughs> so I just always, like, was like, oh, these are my barn cats. I didn't know they were raccoons. Or <laughs> 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 what's it called? Deniability, bro. Yeah, they take you care of the saying? mice. Barn yeah, cats. exactly. And they shit in my car. <laughs> Fun. Good times. I Oh, really weird fact. I always leave a paw print on my car every time I go race if there is one. There you go. It's a weird thing. I'll wash everything but one paw print. It's good luck. Because they, they really do destroy my car. <laughs> Well, so, yeah, bro. let's say that I have a, uh, a story that I want to tell on uh, Barn Bill Dreams or, you know, just share it with you. How do I get in contact with you and, uh, you know, tell you my story or even see your YouTube videos to inspire me and, and refill my <clears throat> motivation tank? So motivational tank is empty. You can go to at Barn Built Dreams on YouTube, Instagram and TikTok. I am a failing Instagram and TikToker for some reason. I don't know, but you can go there. And then on Facebook, it is just good old me, Harley Town. And literally, I'd love to hear your story. I don't care who you are. I don't care what you've done. I don't care where you're at. Share it with me, bro. Fire me up. We can fire each other up. 
as much as I love the Mitsu community, I also want to build a community of inspiration yeah. and just feed off each other. You know what I mean? Yeah, that's what's most important. For sure, bro. So that's where you can find your boy. And if you'd like to be uh, featured in uh, the Mitsu Times Racer Spotlight and you are actually going to show up on time and uh, <laughs> follow through with all of your um, commitments, commitments, then uh, you can write the – Mitsu Times Facebook page because Harley gets all those yep. messages, or you can email admin at mitsutimes.org. Yeah, bro. Seriously, if you guys are truly interested and you are within two to three hours of Grand Rapids, Michigan, hit me up because I will come. We will do it. However, like you said, please be punctual. Please be serious and don't waste my time <laughs> because I feel like I don't want to get to the point where, like, you know, I just don't even want to try anymore. Yeah. So, just make sure people, you know, if you say you're going to do something, hold your word. We, we, we want, Harley and I both want to showcase your car, even maybe your products or your website yeah, or yeah. your whatever. But we, we got to want to do it. Yeah. We, it needs to be on both ends. It's very tough. I can't make anybody do something they don't want to do. And, and quite honestly, bro, um, I believe in both what we're trying to do, you know, as a unit, as what you're trying to do by my, yourself, by myself. Like, I, I, I genuinely believe that the growth in my head is possible, but it definitely helps to have the support of everybody. You know what I mean? Like, oh, yeah. It, I feel like it'll happen for sure, but if y'all want us to keep growing, the best way for that stuff to happen is to just watch the videos, share the videos, subscribe to the channels. And it may sound corny or whatever, but like, that's what it takes, bro. Cause at some point, if this don't grow, like I can't keep throwing money away to go interview people who don't want to be there on time. Right. Not even, can I not, I don't want to, and I won't because my time is too valuable. So, and as much, all the things that Harley just said cost nothing. Right. Like literally. So Yeah. Anyways, I, off, I, off yeah. the soapbox. <laughs> <laughs> so support us supporting you. How about that? Yeah. We'll go with that. We want, Banger. We want to make the community better, but we need your help. Literally. Bro, like it's not a community if it's only us. <laughs> so for sure. All right. So Harley, at the end, I always give people a chance to uh, give a thanks or a shout out to anybody who's helped them out along the way. Uh, is there okay. anybody that you want to give a, a thanks or a shout out to? So like um, – Personal life-wise, my wife, um, probably, again, cliche answer, but I literally would have left to go to a racetrack without my car in the trailer one time if she wasn't with me, bro, because I get so hyped up and in the moment. Um, she just makes sure we got snacks. She makes sure, like, she puts my sunblock on like I'm a little kid because I get so wrapped up in the car, bro. <laughs> she probably leaves big white marks on my face on purpose just to mess with me. But without her, I for sure couldn't do it. Um, everybody in my family, bro, like, but my immediate family, my mom, my dad, my sister, like, for sure. Um, like, sometimes I, again, feel like they don't understand how much I appreciate their support and their belief in me because I'm working my butt off, bro. Even when I'm not posting about it, I promise you I'm grinding. And then um, something that's, you know, very new to me, uh, like again, an emotional feeling comes over me every single time I talk to the, talk about this, but I've had people team up with me for the first time in my life and like, bro, like it, it again, 10 years ago, didn't seem like it was possible for me. And all I did was fought my butt off, but, um, boost in performance, Hockman fabrication, Evo spec performance, anti-lag racing have all like stepped up to help me and, the build and genuinely thank you guys like that means i don't even again and then of course you bro like i appreciate the opportunity i appreciate the chance to branch out like again this all just it's surreal to me it really truly is bro so thank every single one of you and if this is my outro you know i gotta hit it with my my good old fashioned so you let me know if it's time well you know I, harley i want to say you know, it's it's an absolute honor to team up with you. And, uh, you know, I, at first, 
you know, I, I was pretty sure that I made the right choice. And then about two weeks later, I was like, damn, I, I really made the right choice. So, uh, you know, that, I, I really, every, every bit of work that you do for Mitsu times doesn't go unnoticed. And I, and I hope that you know that. And, uh, um, appreciate that, man. You know, the, the community is very important to me and I've learned, uh, you know, since we've teamed up that it's, it, it is equally as important to you. And that's exactly 100%. the kind of person I'm looking for. And I'm excited to see the kind of things that we do in the future. Um, and, and not just that, you know, but I'm also excited to see what Barn Bill Dreams does in the future. So. Let's go, baby. Let's go. With that, uh, Harley, it's been an absolute pleasure having you on. And, uh, you know, I can't wait to not only have you on again, but have you as a guest uh, host at some point. That way we Ooh. can we can team up and, and do some more of these and have some fun and, and maybe get to know people a little bit better than me asking the same, uh, 15 questions every, every week. Hey bro. It's been working so far, right? Yep. We all got to start somewhere. I'm here to help you just like you helped me, man. I can't wait. So, uh, I got to hit them with it, bro. You good with that? Oh yeah. So like I say in all my videos, man, you guys just get out there, get outside your comfort zone. And feed dreams and star fears, y'all. Well, that's it. I'll talk to you uh, uh, here soon, Harley. Peace, brother. Later. Thank you for listening to the Mitsu Times podcast. Check out our Instagram and Facebook for daily updates. Get added to our list by going to mitsutimes.org and clicking submit a slip. Thank you to all of our sponsors.